Hey, Rodney, welcome to the show, man. Hey, happy to be here. I'm so excited to talk to you, bro. Um, I want to start with telling people about everything you've done, and I know it's a lot. Uh, I've been doing research on you, and it's crazy how much experience you have. So let's start with that, and just a quick intro on like you know what all what all you've done and where you're at right now. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so um, basically, I started my first business when I was like 17 years old. I was in like first year of university, and it was a luxury interior design company uh, located in Vaughan called Luxtrim uh, in Ontario, Canada. And uh, yeah, like in my first two years of university, I would like drive back and forth from university to uh, during the weekends, like open up this like uh, interior design location basically and make a couple of sales. And so that thing ended up like popping off uh, while I was young, made uh, quite a bit of money, a couple million. And then I basically uh, used some of that capital to invest into crypto in around 2017. Uh, and also invest into like one of the first decentralized financial applications on Ethereum. It was called CDX at the time. Um, after that, I ended up moving to Korea. I worked uh, with the Icon team on reviewing some of their projects and uh, decentralizing their network. And eventually that CDX project pivoted into uh, like a sports betting exchange, which is now live called SportX. Um, since then, uh, I joined uh, AngelList. Um, I like worked with like Naval Ravikant and like a bunch of other people um, managing like the spearhead program and um, yeah, like managing just a bunch of relationships with a bunch of GPs and overseeing a lot of the deal flow that um, came across that platform. I ended up quitting AngelList uh, in the middle of last year and joining um, a health insurance company called Angle Health, uh, which graduated from YC winter 20. Uh, they raised a couple million dollars and I was part of the team that um, did regulatory work and uh, applications for things like launching a health insurance company and like uh, California and the state of Utah. And then, yeah, from these days, I uh, work at a crypto fund. That's so, so cool, man. Like you have, how old are you, by the way? I'm 24. Jesus, man, you've had like like so much experience in like seven years. I can't even imagine how. <laughs> it's probably like a crazy, crazy ride, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's certainly been crazy. And uh, yeah, there's been tough choices like along the way, lots of ups and downs. Um, like when I was 21, like, um, when I when I had a my own crypto fund in, in Toronto, like I you know made um, some life changing money and lost all of it, which like totally sucked. So it's been a roller coaster with ups and downs, uh, but yeah, just like having a lot of fun learning along the way. And so, what made you wanted to get into BitCloud? How did that happen? Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of my friends uh, have been chatting about BitCloud um, within like the people that I talk to about like seed stage allocations um, as well, like. I was at the beginning of this year before I joined the fund that I work at now, I was thinking of like starting my own fund and the guy who I was going to start it with, like, you know, always talked about BitCloud and how cool of an idea it was to him. So one day I just decided to check it out. And uh, yeah, like since then, I mean, I, I got on, I think, March 14th or so. Um, and yeah, like I've just been totally hooked. I was like one of the first like uh, verified profiles, I think. Um, and yeah, I think at one point I had like the third most likes on the platform. Um, uh, like around a week ago and like the third most DMs as well. Uh, I actually had more DMs come to me than Maybeam, which is like pretty interesting. But yeah, it's been such a fun ride. So so out of curiosity, like you said, you joined, joined on March 14th, but the guy you were with or who told you about it, he had been talking about it for a while. So like but as a platform, it launched in March, right? So like how like how long was he kind of keeping an eye on it or like stuff like that? Yeah, um, I mean, he's like well connected in the venture space and like uh, he probably heard of it through, you know, some of his conversations with, you know, some other people or, you know, being in that ecosystem. Uh, but yeah, like er early investors like got in, um, I think, before March as well. So um, it's it's been, you know, floating around as a conversation piece. And and so you first you caught on the platform, you you kind of like obviously you, you had a lot of experience in the crypto space. So you understood what's going on, where the world is moving. So. You had you could you could see the potential. So I would love to kind of see it from your eyes because you've been in you worked at Icon, you've been you know have your own fund and you've made a lot of mistakes along the way. So you've learned a lot. How do you see Bit BitCloud evolving? Yeah. Um, well, I think that you know two things could happen. It's either you know the platform fails or it doesn't. Um, and you know really like the future is going to look however it turns out, regardless of like what we can guesstimate. But uh, I'm personally like optimistic of the idea of something like decentralized social. Um, because, you know, whereas like Twitter or Instagram or these other uh, companies need to hire developers in order to progress the platform in a direction that they see fit, things like BitCloud allow for there to be this open source thing that you can build on top of that has some key features that new projects don't have to build and they can, you know, really interact with that data set however they want to build things like 
Um, you know, you can build all sorts of different like social media platforms, even on top of BitCloud, if you wanted to, you can use your BitCloud like user as like, you know, um, a character within a video game that someone builds potentially like, you know, the, the possibilities of like what can be built on top of open source, uh, social is like really, um, you know, pretty unlimited. So well, the same example, when you talked about the character for the video game, how does that look? What do you mean? Yeah. Um, like you know, uh, I, I like spoke with, I think one team that was like thinking about doing something like this, which is like, which like really blew my mind, but basically like they wanted you to be able to like, you know, log into this, you know, Pabo style video game uh, using like your uh, BitCloud user um, and like have your creator coins somehow be integrated with, you know, the, the game itself. And um, I personally, like, I don't know how it worked from like a technology perspective, but it seemed like, you know, they had a you know pretty cool idea. So I, it's going to be cool to see if people can figure like something like that out. So, so I, do you think like, cause that's one thing, cause I'm thinking, you know, we chatted about this before, like I've been thinking about building a tool in the space and playing with it. Like, but it's still like kind of, you can't lo- you can't use the big cloud if, well, if, they, if you don't have an API, but you think they will make it public in that way where you can use that as a, like, you know, to, to be able to like log in through the, someone's user ID or like to track that with while building applications. Yeah, I think I think it will be possible. And yeah, like obviously there's like no API access right now, but you know, within the white paper, um the project does say that they want to decentralize in the future. Obviously, we don't know like when uh, or how that's going to happen. It seems like, you know, the number of nodes are increasing right now. Um so it looks like, you know, they're in the process of some form of, you know, steady decentralization, but like, you know, it's controlled um right now and it's not like anyone can run a node or something. Um, and yeah, I think that eventually they, though they will open up to like other nodes once there's enough computing power to protect the network from, you know, attacks from other nodes and things like that. So, um, yeah, I'm confident that like, you know, the whole premise of the network is to have it be open source and decentralized so people can build on top of it. And if that doesn't happen, then the whole idea, you know, didn't really turn out the way that was planned. So makes yeah. complete sense. Makes complete sense. So you, so how, how early do you think we are right now? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I mean, um, so I think that there is some uh, stats that people can look at uh, on this website called like CloudGate, for example, which shows like the total number of registered profiles. I haven't looked at it for a couple of days now, but it seems like the number of registered profiles was sitting at around 150,000 uh, users, um, which if you think about it, like uh, from a crypto application perspective, that's more users, um, you know, that are probably using this platform per day than most other decentralized applications that exist. And you can check out the stats for decentralized applications on like um, uh, DAP Radar if you want, or some other platforms that are similar, uh, just to check. But, you know, obviously this is not a decentralized application, so one can call it one of the largest decentralized applications just yet. But if yeah. it were to decentralize, then it would certainly be like one of the largest. Um, and And yeah, like, I think that part of the reason is because you know, um, this is a social media platform and, you know, not like a DEX or, you know, uh, another like financial instrument or cryptocurrency project or something like that. So the barrier to users like using it um, has been like really lowered. And so if you think about like the early adopter curve from, you know, the perspective of cryptocurrency, like maybe we're not early adopters because this is way more users than most other apps. But if you think about it from like a social media perspective, and if that's the direction that the application ends up going, then you'll see that, you know, we are actually quite early given that, you know, the number of Twitter profiles that exist is in the billions, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so fascinating to think like that. Yeah. Um, so you've been kind of keeping, I'm sure you're, you're keeping an eye on this space quite a bit now, right? You're, you're looking at all these projects that are happening. What are some of the tools that are really standing out for you? Yeah, it's uh, a good question. So when I like first got on this platform, you know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, like the first thing that came to mind is like, you know, this can totally just be like Twitter and Patreon um, as like uh, a tool. And that was like, you know, my primitive understanding of, you know, the platform before like I started, you know, really like having my mind blown to the kinds of applications that can be built on top of it and how people can really interact with it. Um, but uh, to that end, like, you know, a really interesting project that stands out to me is like this project called Get Moon Bounce. Um, so uh, Moon Bounce is basically like uh, a way for people to, uh, paywall content using their creator coins. Um, and so if you hold this much of their creator coin, for example, like you would have access to certain things that, you know, uh, the influencer or community uh, management, you know, uh, profile uh, uses as like community incentives. And so um, things like that, I think are pivotal because, you know, the value, yeah. like the value of social tokens is, you know, however, each creator um, incentivizes their community. So 
the more people incentivizing the community in different ways, which don't have to be like monetary in nature as well. Like people would value things like Zoom calls with, you know, people that they really look up to or calls for advice. It doesn't have to be like, you know, an airdrop to your holders or anything like that. So um, yeah, I think like the value of social tokens will come from software that allows for creators to interact with uh, their communities using these social uh, tokens. And I think projects like Moon Bounce are pivotal for that. Makes complete sense because, you know, like when I was building, starting this podcast, and one of the ideas I had was, it's actually funny because I'm using the same, I'm using Typeform to build uh, the website or the landing page or whatever, right? And and Moonbounce and Bitswap, they're all using Typeform. And so while I was chatting, I was kind of looking at it. And I'm like, man, it's crazy. I'm building this thing and I don't want to put it on YouTube or whatever. Like I'll put like clips out of it, but I want to put the actual podcast on like, you know, on, on like my own website so I can actually, you know, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's all about the community here, right? So I want to keep it like, in the community and i'm like you know it'd be kind of cool we like like have an entire podcast and have entire whatever but then have a, a membership section where let's say like you know someone like can ask questions and let's say i can pre- announce pre- that i'm going to be doing a podcast with this guy and i can we can ask you questions but to be able to ask those questions you have to have a certain amount of coins for example right yeah and and, and the same thing but i'm like well how do i actually let people like how do i how do i find how do i find out without going and checking manually that they have the coins or not right you need some, yep. or like, how do I get them to interact, you know, dynamically that I know, okay, well, they have the coin, let them in or so on and so forth. So you need tools like that to be able to do those things, like you said. Yeah, for sure. And also, you know, uh, you can go even one step further with, you know, thinking about how an application like Moonbounce could be valuable. If you are able to track people's engagement on platforms like YouTube, uh, Twitter, you know, Twitch, um, Instagram, and other platforms and allow for users to, within your database, start like collecting um, you know, um, all of these experiences in one place and you start valuing experiences in how many creator tokens you would like to reward people for their engagement of, um, you could potentially like, you know, have like IOUs for anyone who wants to engage with these creators, um, from like, you know, a token ownership perspective, um, and like onboard users onto your BitClo following and give them some of the creator tokens that they've aggregated by being active community members as well. So um, yeah, lots of interesting opportunities for you know, uh, what can be done here. And also that would like, build you know, quite a valuable database um, uh, for like, a project like Moonbounce potentially, um, which they can use to you know, really like, improve user experience in you know, tons of different ways and uh, also increase the utility for creators as well. So um, yeah, really interesting to think about that one. Yeah, and I also find it very fascinating, you know, like being like a like a creator, like a, like or like even someone doing podcasts or someone doing like you know having a um, amazing audience. Like it's so hard on tools like you know like let's take let's take, a, let's take an example of po- uh, podcasting for right. So like Spotify or Apple uh, Music where you're posting the podcast. Like as a as a creator, you have no idea who these people are, how much are the, who are listening to you. But with this, like actually, because now that you are, as you said, rewarding them with tokens and it's in their best interest to like kind of reveal who they are because they will be making more, you know, they're making money basically as, as you go in and they're connecting to your, connecting to people who they look up to. So now you can actually know who these people are and what value you're providing and you can use data to double down and create better content, which yeah. I think is pretty fascinating too. For sure. And right now we're only seeing, you know, the very primitive beginnings of things like that uh, being put to use within the real world where like, Craig Clemens has like a Telegram group chat for his top 25 holders. Um, you know, Andy Arts is doing like Zoom calls with his top five holders every weekend. Um, like Whale Shark is like, you know, giving out like NFTs to his top holders, snapshotting it at the end of the month. Um, but, you know, these are just new creators that have these sorts of incentives built out. Whereas if we had... Makes sense. It's actually pretty interesting because my first startup uh, was basically digital loyalty program. And it was kind of like, in a way that a local business owner could um, choose rewards based on, so you scan your phone, you would get points. And uh, when you shop at a local business and they would they can choose rewards based on like, you know, how much money you spend and they can make customizable rewards. For example, let's say coffee shop, if you spend this much, if you have this much points, you can redeem for how, how, how like making an espresso, we'll show you behind the scenes, kind of like, like, a, like, a, like a engaging kind of community kind of point. But mm-hmm. it was hard because local business owners, you know, there was no like, there was no like you didn't have love for the you just like you just wanted your coffee you didn't care about that kind of stuff but but we still saw a little bit of like the people who really loved it like that place they wanted those rewards and it was a great way to engage it i think this is so crazy because if you can if you can have customized rewards then you can like work with your it's like a way of like engaging people in a very personal level and there's so much you can do you know what i mean like it's such an interesting way to look at it 
in the creator economy. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, eventually like a project like Moonbounce doesn't even have to be like Bitcloud native. They could, you know, potentially like go out and, you know, in- integrate with Whale Token or like integrate with like, you know, tokens on Rally or, um, you know, other social or creator tokens as well. So um, yeah, very, that's like definitely like one of my favorite projects that have spun up um, within this ecosystem for sure. How does it look for, how does it look with respect to like, you know, uh, like you said, like you can see how much people are engaging on different platforms like YouTube or or like Twitter or whatever, and then you can kind of integrate it that way. How would you have that? As in, like, like how would you integrate with someone with just like an application like YouTube? Yeah, I mean, it's tough, you know. Um, I I can't even imagine like the hoops and bounds that people are going to have to hop through to you know really build technology like that. Um, yeah, hopefully, you know. In a V1 world, you're probably not going to uh, yeah. use things like that. And you're probably just going to, you know, paywall content using creator coins. Um, yeah. But then once things like creator coin off ramp and on ramps exist, and once things like like that allow for people to buy or sell creator coins like on your own Shopify site, potentially, you know. Um, and once uh, these developers like, yeah, just start pushing like the V1, start aggregating users, you know, grow as a team. I think they'll have the resources to be able to think about building technology like that for sure. Well, I mean, the, the Shopify side is, pre- is pretty straightforward, though. Like, right, you can just probably put like a simple code on your in your header, and probably that would work. Yeah, for sure. I just think that um, basically, like, uh, it, there's just no uh, fiat on ramps or off ramps that you can really like plug right. into this sort of thing right now. But I think once there will be, it you know, um, we'll really have to see the future of BitCloud. I mean, you know, we're speculating on tons yeah. of different speculations right now, but I think that it could look like that in the, in the future for sure. But I think that's, that's the fun of it, right? Like you're like, whoa, it's, what will happen? And we're chatting about it and, you know, looking, but maybe like we look back three years, we're like, yeah, we talked about this and that actually happened. <laughs> well, we talked about this and that was completely wrong. That did not happen at all, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And like, you know, even like in a couple of weeks, just looking back at this and seeing the things that we were excited about now. I mean, the platform has really only been around for a month. And yeah, uh, yeah everything that we've learned has only been like, you know, with all these different applications, like, you know, this era of innovation has really only started a couple of weeks ago, like two weeks ago with, you know, BitSwap yeah. announcing publicly that they're doing something. And so, yeah, um, yeah I mean, it's going to be like right now, there's around like 50 or 60 projects building, right? I mean, some of these are going to be weeded out. Some of these are going to turn into, you know, success cases. And yeah. and at the same time, like this isn't going to be the only batch of companies that are going to be building on top of this thing. There's going to be, you know, another 50 that come and then another 50 that come and you know, like right now, the user growth is like, you know, 150,000 users. What about when there's like a million users? And like, you know, if there is like the percentage of developers, you know, of those new users may drop given that the developers are probably early adopters and are already here. But like even some of those guys will like eventually build something or like like within the larger set of population that comes, there will be other developers that want to build something that will be easy to conceptualize because this isn't, you know, decentralized finance. You know, this is, you know, decentralized social media and within the social media world, anything that is a valuable service to people can definitely be built on top of this. So, um, yeah, those are definitely like my thoughts on it. Like I, there's going to like if, if this thing succeeds as a platform, there's going to be a world where things like marketing analytics tools exist for brands to yeah. be able to manage content and campaigns. Uh, there's going to be tools for like, you know, extrapolating like what kind of like, you know, uh, engagement is valuable for you to buy as a brand. What kind of creators are like valuable to buy into, you know? Um, and we haven't even begun to see like, you know, B2B style applications built into this because for sure it's too early and those users aren't here. But I think maybe if, if there is success, we're going to see all sorts of shit. Yeah. I'm already seeing like people, like tools that are already available in the, you know, for Instagram or whatever world, like, like uh, third party tools are already getting built. The example I saw the day I saw it was, I don't remember the name of the tool, but basically they were building like a later where you can post, we can schedule posts for, uh, for like uh, pushing out later, like in the evening or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, like that already exists in the in the lo- like normal like the social media world and it's coming in decentralized now, right? Same thing. And there's nothing kind of what I was talking about. Uh, and it's funny though because I in my first episode I had Anton who was who built the who built the coin of course called uh, I can't remember his name, but like he did build the the embed and the embed tool. Uh, and I was building that too, and we're chatting about it. We we're like, it's so cool. We because he just launched it the day before I was about to launch it, and wow. we're chatting about it. And and it's like was that already exists in in the like you know, in the so in, like in the uh, social media world where people will put like you know these uh, third-party reviews on their website, whether it's from Trustpilot or Yelp or whatever, or Facebook reviews, just to like kind of get like credibility. And same yeah. thing with like you know, we're talking about the same thing can be said. The whole point of having a creator coin, basically, it's credibility. Like real people are investing in you, that gives you a lot of credibility. Like, 
So it's like the same thing that already happening in the social media world is starting to happen, already starting to happen in the decentralized social media world. As you said, like right now it's so early, but as the users come, it could be really interesting to see how, how this expands, I guess. Yeah, like, um, you know, a lot of creators, like, basically what it looks like is like a lot of creators have hopped on, uh, but they haven't like begun to port over their communities. Exactly. And, yeah. you know, the reason for not porting over their communities is like twofold. First, like, you know, the platform isn't like, le like seen as legitimate enough right now for them to feel comfortable with doing so. And uh, second, like they don't have like meaningful creator tools to interact with the mass audience and everything is done right now very manually. So yep. like, for example, like mass actions, like buying uh, some tokens and all of your followers, you know, or like mass actions, like, you know, DMing a lot of people or like unfollowing a bunch of people or following a bunch of people that followed you or things like that are like not even possible, but, you know, kind of necessary for your big brands to interact with their social media profiles. Um, and yeah, we've seen people like uh, Gareth Emery, a very famous DJ, he's super into DeFi. He comes onto the platform and, you know, his mindset as a celebrity within this environment is, I'm not going to put over my own, my whole following, but I'm going to drop, you know, my thoughts on, you know, this ecosystem, the space, what I think about it, and, you know, maybe what would make me feel comfortable with um, porting over my audience and what state this platform is going to have to be in. And I think that, like, user feedback like that is definitely, like, the most valuable thing that can come out of, you know, this form of launch that's happening really quickly. But the second these influencers feel confident with porting over their followings, like, I can, I speculate that the amount of followers that the influencers on Bayclo have right now you know, is probably in like the hundreds of millions um, if in aggregate. And even if some meaningful percentage of those ports over, the amount of users that we have on the platform is going to, you know, yeah. 10, 20, 30 yeah. X. Yeah. Um, it's actually crazy. I was watching or listening to a Clubhouse talk with uh, Chamat, and he said that the re he made an account, he verified it. But the reason he's not interacting is, is, is like, it's just too early. He's, he's watching, waiting and watching how it's going. And he's kind of going to, you know, so he's not like taking... He's letting the community form and letting all these things happen naturally before he kind of gets in. Um, sorry, go ahead. Were you saying something? Yeah. Um, no, I was just, I, I totally like, you know, agree with like his stance on this kind of thing and like Naval and like, you know, everyone who, you know, was, you know, is really excited about this, like on the inside, but like, obviously like they, they don't have much to gain from, you know, being yeah. the first adopters of a platform like this, you know, um, and, you know, from their perspective, it's, you know, for sure safer to just like you know, wait on the sidelines. And you know what, if this thing is a smashing success and turns into like a meaningful utility that's necessary in like everyday lives, then of course they're going to hop in, you know, but yeah. um, at the same time, like it, it, it's okay if they don't as well, you know. Yeah. And Naval also said, I remember him saying that he's like, basically he's like, I'm at this point, I am like, you know, I, I, people look up to me a lot of times, right? So like if I join and I give my word of confidence, basically people start buying and stuff like that. And I don't, and I'm not sure where it's going right now. And I don't want to sway people in one direction. And then, you know, it makes complete sense. The, the sense of responsibility for him as well, right? Yeah, for uh, sure. Like, I, th I think in his world, he'll call it like signal, like signaling. Yeah, he okay. probably doesn't want to send any signal either way. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like it, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So like Naval, like or Chamath, like being very explicit about loving the platform would cause their followings of, you know, people who are speculating, like early adopters and like, you know, hold their word as truth to you know come over and you know they the last thing that they would want to do is you know cause you know harm or liability to their following so um i totally understand their view and anyone using the platform should be doing so understanding that you know any money you put in you're probably going to lose um you know there's no off ramps you know like this is literally just like a seven page white paper that turned into like something that looks like twitter and that now you can like buy or sell things in um so yeah i think everyone should just understand that we're in the very early stages of whatever this is going to be. Yeah. Um, why do you think that, out of curiosity, like, you know, you're in the VC space and you're, see, you're probably seeing what's happening behind the scenes, but why do you think that like someone like, you know, Mark Andreessen and Ben Horowitz, who are investors in the company, haven't even verified their accounts? Yeah, I think the same reason why like Chamal for Nepal, uh, you know, don't want to cause signal either way. It's, you know, the, it's not even a question of whether or not they know about this platform. I mean, you know, they certainly know about the platform. And, you know, yeah. everyone acts within their best interest. So, um, you know, they're, they're probably doing so because from their perspective, it makes sense to not interact with it right now. But in the future, I mean, uh, you know, once, once every, once like the, everyone is like more happy with everything that's going on, and you know, once legitimacy has been stabilized, I'm, I'm very confident that they'll, they'll come onto the platform awesome. as well, for sure. Makes sense. Anything else you're seeing behind the scenes that you, that you can share with us that is like, something that's not public, but in the VC world, you're seeing that's happening quite a bit? 
I mean, um, yeah, I guess like one thing I can share is that, you know, there's going to be projects launching on this thing um, with with pretty rapid pace um, uh, pretty quickly. Like every single week, I think you're going to see, uh, you know, several meaningful technologies put out. Um, like even even as of recent, like BitCloud Signal was not a thing like a week ago or, or like a week and a half ago. Now it's like pivotal to how people think about like investing into creator coins. They're following you know, what other people are doing and like, um, you know, executing trades accordingly. Um, and I think that not only is like utility like that going to be like really valuable, but every single week there's going to be like projects of similar caliber and similar utility built. And so the way that we interact with this platform today might, you know, be completely different from how we interact with it, even in something like a couple of weeks. Like we might not even be using the BitCloud website because someone built something more interesting and more, more useful. Um, and instead, we'll just be interacting with the native chain. Um, and yeah, there might be different communities that choose to interact with this platform in different ways. You know, you can scan every single block, you know, like pull out things like hashtags, aggregate those, you know, build something with that if you wanted to. You know, you can, um, yeah, you can really build like just a ton of things. And uh, it's going to be fascinating to see what comes live shortly. Amazing. Um, how do you see, so like, so also you are in the investing world now, like, right? So. Uh, you're spending more of your time looking at different projects and like and like in analyzing which one makes sense for you, blah, and, and which one you want to you know spend more time investing or whatever it might be. But how, if you were building, if you're building a tool, uh, where would you, what, what what would be your at this point as of right now? Where would you how what would you want to build? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, like personally, I think I would look into you know the social token part of things and the creator tools part of things like. I mean, there's tons of opportunity to have like, you know, websites where you log in with BitCloud and look at all the NFTs associated with a MetaMask address that is recorded to be, you know, uh, part of your BitCloud address and, um, you know, have like an NFT gallery of like, you know, which creators hold what kind of NFTs. Um, I think that there's opportunity to build things like, you know, a dashboard of all creator rewards and, uh, you know, all these different incentives that people have put out for people and like coin price changes like since then. Um, I think there's like, an opportunity to build like you know a, a creator coin decentralized exchange um i think there's opportunities to build like uh you know set yeah centralized exchanges will be built i'm sure like um yeah um really t just tons of things are coming from tons of different yeah. people and uh the reality of things that you can conceptualize is you know usually shaped by the innovations you see around you and the innovations that we see around us in a couple of days change every single time so that makes makes complete sense yeah um, amazing yeah and as you said like if Especially because he, I, I was checking him out as well, because um, he's so you know so popular now and there. And I was looking at it how he had uh, his his agency or like uh, his company basically manages so many artists. So he has got such a crazy sway that he can basically, as, as you said, like once it starts becoming bigger and bigger, like it can easily get them on platform. And obviously, as he gets them on platform, it just can really blow, he can he has a lot of power basically in that way to blow it up and stuff like that. Yeah, Jake Udell, like Alec Udell, um, Michael Joseph, and like Heike uh and like Rhett and this one guy named william are like uh my favorite influencer onboarders in aggregate i think that they have uh just like used a ton of their own horsepower to um really help out this ecosystem so i'm very thankful for everything they've done shout out to all of them amazing man I also the summit guys those guys are great too sorry who the summit guys who are they there, there, there's a there's a couple of people who are in this ecosystem that are part of this company called Summit that hosts conferences and they've they've also been instrumental to the celebrity success of this platform. So how do you see like you know at this particular point, let's say someone new comes on and join, how do you see they can grow their audience? Like how how do they become uh, how did they how do they become like someone who's influential and like you know build a brand with their with their with the followers and stuff like that? Someone who's not influential from before. Yeah, um, I have to say, I think it was easier to do so before when there was less users on the platform. And right now it might be more of an uphill battle, similar to how Twitter was easier before. And now it's you know almost impossible to grow a big account. Um, but what I've seen um, was things like authenticity um, are really valuable in this space. You know, this is like a crypto project, which, you know, some people, you know, have a lack of trust for. And, you know, like you, there's like no off ramps, which is like has like a lack of trust. But if you're authentic on the platform and people know that you're a real person and you're just, you know, being yourself and having fun and you show people, you know, some part of your own life. I think that that turns into something that's really valuable um, in a platform like this. 
uh, where trust is scars. Like um, even you give example of Sajil, the same thing I saw when he was putting images of like, hey, we're in, in our bedroom, start up building this thing. It looks, so, it looks so like, okay, cool. This kid is not trying to like, you know, I'm this and I'm that. Like I'm a kid and I'm just here for the fun and I'm building this thing in my bedroom. That's, that was amazing that you want to relate with him. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I think that, you know, tons of people can take a similar, you know, journey. I think that building in public has never been more valuable given the audience revolves around early adopters, VCs, and people who are big into crypto. So it seems like there's like, you know, this is the best platform to build in public. Nowhere else are you going to have, you know, this amount of like, you know, people that are, could be valuable to you looking at your content. So um, I definitely think building in public is valuable. But for me, like also what worked back in the day, like early, like three weeks ago when the global feed wasn't even fully populated and you can make a couple of posts, they all hit, um, was things like uh, buying into the people who interacted with my posts to build community. Um, so I would, you know, um, I made posts like, uh, pitch me your token. And I was just like, this is like one of the first posts I did. And I just like literally bought like hundreds of dollars of everyone's tokens that like reacted to my post. And it was a bunch of meme accounts. And then like those meme accounts started like making memes of me, <laughs> which was like hilarious. Um, and like, yeah, like at one point, like Andy Arts like bought my token. So like I Photoshopped my face to have like laser beam eyes coming out. And then all these meme accounts were like, we're going to follow suit. And all the meme accounts started like Photoshopping like laser beams out of their eyes. Um, and like, that was a lot of fun. I put like, I put on a party hat, um, like, uh, when I hit 1000 followers and then like a couple of days later, these developers started popping up like blue party hat and red party hat as like big cloud developers. So like that was a lot of fun, but yeah, I think that just like having a lot of fun with the platform, interacting with your communities and being authentic are probably the best ways to, um, get big on big cloud. I also think that one more challenge people with, with the with the part with like you were talking about trust is that I don't know if that's for you how you have felt that or not but I think it feels a little weird when you can't see the developers like when you don't know who these people are and like real that kind of makes you feel a little stressed out I wonder why why do you think they do that why what what's the reason for them to not be public yeah I mean it's a good question I think that um probably uh for the same reason as why uh you know influencers aren't comfortable with porting over their whole followings right um, I think that, you know, this project is, uh, in the very early stages, you know, it's, um, there's, you know, there's a lot of things going on and I think that maybe one day the team will be non anonymous, but in my opinion, like, even if they stay anonymous, I think it's totally fine. And, you know, there's tons of crypto projects where you don't know who the founders are. Like nobody knows who Satoshi is or if he's still around, he has the biggest wallet ever, but, um, you know, we're all, we all love Bitcoin and, you know, Coinbase IPO. So, um. Yeah. yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, tons of interesting projects these days have a fully anonymous team. And within the crypto world, it's quite normal, but I can understand uh, the hesitation that people have within the social media realm of things of the founding team being anonymous. So I totally get it. What does like BitCloud mean for creators and influencers? Like why would someone like Justin Bieber or Logan Paul jump on the block? Yeah, um, it's a good question. I mean, so... Um... There's a prediction that, you know, BitCloud would eventually turn into a game. I don't know who said that, but someone said that. Uh, what are your thoughts yeah. on this? Would you start, like, would you start investing in gamers, streamers, or people in the gaming industry? Yeah, I mean, um, maybe. I mean, we're, we're really going to have to see. Um, like, I think that uh, once creator coins are tradable, people might build all sorts of interesting contraptions that interact with those creator coins in funny ways. Um, and, yeah, I think that, you know, we're going to see things like, uh, you know, like a black box where you can just put a couple of creator coins in and you get some other random creator coins, for example, or like, um, yeah, like maybe like, you know, using your creator co coins within some sort of gamified ecosystem where you can buy things like NFTs or, um, you know, it, it complete quests and earn rewards that are like in BitCloud or things like that. I think that would all be like a lot of fun. And I think that it, there's probably smart people doing something like that if they see value in it. I think even, obviously there's going to be a lot of changes, but even something as simple as uh, video and audio probably would, you know, give that one level up because like, like think about it, like a lot of now we're in that crazy audio video world, right? Where people would, I think it's like when you can see it would become more interactive in that way. I feel like it's a little too dry with text right now. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, yeah, I think that like my favorite applications of, you know, people using photos on the platform so far is just all the meme accounts, you know, posting exactly. all meme content. but. In the future, this will definitely change into, you know, people releasing their music videos or, um, you know, maybe like it'd be cool if you can have audio forum content as well. But um, 
yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that like is architected into this whole ecosystem, whether it's on the big cloud site itself and the team there goes on and builds something like that, or whether there's going to be a third party way to interact with this sort of stuff. But I think regardless, it's, it's necessary to the success of this kind of thing. Yeah. And I think that's kind of one thing I was talking about. I, the reason I even wanted to do this podcast was, or the video aspect of it was because every time I'm seeing, like you mentioned so many great people who are doing so many cool things, but I'm looking, I'm not an OG, like I'm being really honest with you. I'm not like someone who's like an OG crypto person, right? I'm learning and I'm evolving. I'm like, you know, you got to change the world and I'm trying to like, but I never got into Bitcoin very early, right? Like you were young, so you got in 2017, but you're still young. Like I got in 2017, 2018, but like, but like, for, like my startup life started like, you know, 2012, right? So I was a late, I was a late adopter in that way. Um, but, uh, but as I'm learning more, as a, someone who's a mainstream kind of person, right? I look at it in the community and the one thing that I feel is missing is real people. Like when I have the chat with you, this is beautiful. Because I'm trying to get, I'm, I'm getting to know you at a hum, more a human level, right? Yeah. And then learn about these crazy, awesome things that, you know, people are building. But you never see that. Like all you see is like, even if you look at like, if you look at like all these crypto startups, you look at these weird ass fucking com- connecting the world, like, you know, with stars and like these, their, their intro videos. And you're like, why don't you just build like a normal human video and talk about from a human perspective? Like, hey, we're going to change the world. This is how it's going to look. It's going to be this, you know, you know what I mean? Like how, yeah. paint the picture, but in a, in a human world, not like in this weird fucking, uh, you know what I mean? Though, yeah. right? And for sure. Like, and, and I totally agree. And it's also like the reason why things like Clubhouse have like been popping off in the Bit Club community, because people are looking for this sort of real medium to have conversations about things that are, are they're passionate about. And um, yeah, like, I don't, I don't know if um, anyone listening to this like has been on the Bit Club, Clubhouse communities, but yeah, there's like tons of clubs that are constantly up like 24 seven, basically of like, you have the Russian communities like holding down international rooms in the night. And during the day you have these North American communities, like the Bit Club Club or Bit Club community or like tons of other clubs that exist these days. There's just, you know, so many of them. Um, yeah. yeah, people are constantly chatting about this kind of thing. Um, yeah. And not only that, we're seeing like the evolution of those clubhouse rooms go from educational content about Bit Cloud and new questions that are Q&A form to instead being like reality TV shows where you can buy or sell people's tokens just for fun in like a social setting on stage and we're also seeing things like talent shows come out we're seeing show, shows like shoot your shot i mean yeah. someone's hosting like the big club bachelor um so you know we're, we're really seeing like tons of really interesting things on the social side of this that you know is like just on clubhouse but um it'd be great if it can have like a deeper integration in the future thank you so much man thank you so much for coming this was all pure gold uh this was amazing i appreciate your time yeah for sure man thanks for having me i'm uh, always always happy to chat and uh, it's been a lot of fun on my end as well. Thanks, bye.